Howdy and hello class, my name is Christian Sasser, but you can call me Dr. MH4, and welcome to FNAF 101A. Uh, this is going to be a one class only deal, so make sure you pay attention and take notes, there will be a quiz at the end. We start by listing off some important characters. Uh, does anyone have any recommendations or suggestions for important characters? Anyone you in particular you have in mind? The dead children. That's a good start. By the way, content warning, there are dead children and some other disturbing features of this story. The story is a tragedy, so just be aware. And if you need to step outside, then we will point and laugh at you. We're going to make our timeline and make it a little long just in case. But let's go ahead and put this as an important date that we will need later, 19. 83, and then this important date we will need later, 1987. The missing children's incident happens in between here. The missing children's incident was when the original four animatronic characters got possessed. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, and those are known as the, uh, the Showtime animatronics. Those are the original four from Five Nights at Freddy's 1. There are four children who got uh, who went missing in the missing children's incident. Well, actually there's five, and that child was put into Golden Freddy, but we will get to that later. This is kind of a one-off fact that the only child that I can remember the name of from the missing children's incident, other than Golden Freddy's child, was the one who was stuffed into Chica, who was named Susie, and she was the first child to be killed. And so you might be wondering, missing children's incident, well, if there's a killer, who is that killer? Let's go ahead and talk about the Afton family. First off, most important, William Afton. William is the father of the Afton family, and he is the killer in the missing children's incident. He is also the co-founder of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and all of its subsidiaries, along with a man named Henry Emily. Let's write down Henry and Emily because we will meet him later. So somewhere before 1983, Fazbear Entertainment starts up. William Afton has, uh, is doing sort of the like front end of the business. He's the one who creates all the animatronics. He is the one who manages like PR and stuff. And Henry and Emily is working on the back end of all of this. He's like managing the business side of it. So he's their, their best friends they are cooperating and creating this business. And the first location was actually not a Freddy Fazbear's location. It was called Fred Bear and Friends Family Diner. So we're gonna put Fred Bear Diner on the timeline. Uh, this is where Golden Freddy comes into play and Spring Bonnie. And Spring Bonnie is a very important uh, animatronic suit. Both of these suits are called Spring Lock Suits. Spring Lock Suits are special animatronic mascot suits that can be worn both by the robots or by a human employee. And whenever they are in uh, performance mode, which is when they're being used by the robots, they have these things called spring locks that lock into place so they can be used with that robot. But the spring locks pull away when they are not in use, so they can be used, so the suit can be used by a human being and uh, roam around the show floor and interact with children and stuff. At Fred Bear's Family Diner, we have, uh, like I said, William Afton. This is where we need to talk about some of the other members of the Afton family. Uh, first, we have Evan Afton, the youngest son, and Michael Afton, the oldest son as well as Elizabeth Afton, but she isn't important right now. She will be very important later. And she is uh, William's daughter. There's a lot of, we'll get to it when we get to it in this story. I should go ahead and mention that this timeline rundown will not go past the seventh game in the franchise because anything past Ultimate Custom Night is way too confusing and convoluted even for this story standards. It just goes off the rails, bad doo doo insane and I'm not going to waste your time with that. Uh, I'm only going to waste your time with this. The robot characters that William Afton is creating for the uh, Fred Bear, Fazbear, etc. franchise 
uh, Evan develops a fear of them, and thus all of his peers and classmates and friends uh, make fun of him for this fear, especially Michael. Michael is uh, very tormenting in that way when they are younger to Evan. Uh, there is a playable cutscene in one of the games where you are playing as a young Evan Afton walking through the Afton household. Evan Afton is scared by Michael jumping out from behind their recliner with a foxy mask on. And uh, this is showing how much Evan is tormented by Michael. And so later, this goes on. We get to 1983. This is the big, first huge event, Fight of 83. So Michael is at Evan's birthday party, which William is, you know, one of the owners of Fred Bear's Family Diner. William forced Evan to have his birthday party at Fred Bear's, which, you know, he doesn't want to. He's scared of them. Michael and his friends bully and peer pressure Evan into getting close to Fred Bear's mouth. And they say, hey, Fred Bear wants to give Evan a big old kiss. But what they don't know is that the spring locks in the spring lock suits are prone to moisture. So if they get too wet or if they move around too much, then you get spring locked. And which means you get impaled by a bunch of spring locks spring locking into you, which is, does not sound like it would be fun. In the bite of 83, Evan Afton's head is inside Fred Bear's mouth, and his shaking and crying causes a spring lock failure, and the robot bites his frontal lobe. Between the bite of 83 and Evan developing the fear of animatronics, there is a one week period where FNAF 4 takes place. FNAF 4 involves you with the nightmare animatronics, and it is heavily theorized that throughout the course of FNAF 4, you are playing through Evan Afton's nightmares of the uh, Fred Bear animatronics. And in one of the final levels of FNAF 4, the child's room that you play in is uh, replaced with what appears to be some kind of hospital room. And it is theorized that his one last nightmare that Evan must conquer while he is in the hospital for the bite of 83. Unfortunately, Evan does pass away, but his uh, spirit possesses Golden Freddy, the Fred Bear animatronic, which, how does that happen? We have to talk about a very convoluted, kind of stupid concept called Agony and Remnant. Agony is uh, a sort of essence of pure just pain and suffering that occurs and happens and manifests whenever a traumatic event happens in the Five Nights at Freddy series. And uh, Remnant is a distillation of agony into a usable energy source. Evan's agony was so great that instead of being able to move on uh, into the afterlife, his soul remained in the Fred Bear animatronic. And it is believed somehow William Afton figured this out. And because he figured this out, he wanted to know how did this happen? How can this be reversed or recreated or something? And so William Afton commits the missing children's incident. The missing children are missing because William Afton donned the spring bonnie suit, which I'm assuming at this point, uh, somewhere in between the bite of 83 and the missing children's incident, uh, Fred Bear's Family Diner closes down because of the Bite of 83, and they start a new location that is Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. The Spring Bonnie suit is being stored in a safe room, missing children's incident, where five kids go missing, and William hides their bodies in the Showtime animatronics. That's why they're possessing those suits. Their agony is in those suits. As I said earlier, there are five, so uh, we know Susie goes into Chica. I can't remember the other kids' names, but they go into Freddy, Bonnie, and Foxy. And there is a fifth child who is put in Golden Freddy's uh, suit. And that child's name is Cassidy. So Cassidy is an important character. Cassidy slash the vengeful spirit. And so both Cassidy and Evan are possessing Golden Freddy. 
some more stuff happens. It's very like not super clear what happens in between 1983 and 1987, but William keeps making animatronics. William and Henry keep building their business. At some point, Henry figures out what is going on. The police never catch William for his crimes, but Henry knows what's happening and kicks William out of the business. So somewhere in between here, William is not with uh, Freddy's anymore. He is angry with Henry, obviously, because he kicked, not only kicked him out of the business that he helped start, but because he can no longer run these horrible experiments with the lives of children. And uh, so what he does to get revenge is that he lures Henry's daughter outside of the Freddy's location. At the new Freddy's location, there is this thing called the security puppet. And the security puppet was designed to keep the children safe in the event of something going wrong. And what William did was he snuck into Freddy's. Let me go ahead and write Henry's daughter's name. Charlie, Emily, I believe her name is Charlie. In the games, her name is Charlotte, but in the books, her name is Charlie. It doesn't matter. We have the puppet incident where the, the security puppet is put, is trapped in its box by William Afton. He puts something on top of the box so it can't get out and assist Charlie. And William lures Charlie outside of the pizzeria into the back alley and he ends her life. And the puppet escapes too late, rushes outside, it's pouring down rain, and the puppet breaks down before it can reach Charlie's body. And because of this tragedy, the soul of Charlie is going into the puppet. So now, the puppet, or the marionette, as some people call it, is possessed by Charlie Emily. 1987, this is the bite of 87, as I'm sure most of you have seen the Markiplier clip. Was that the bite of 87? Editing Christian, put that clip over the footage. Was that the bite of 87? Funny. Was that the bite of 87? The bite of 87 isn't uh, super duper important to what we have going on. What happens is in one of the locations, there's an animatronic uh, called Mangle. People aren't 100% sure who did the Bite of 87, but it is most likely Mangle because in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, Mangle's jump scare has her coming down from the ceiling and look, looking like biting the player character's frontal lobe. So the security guard at the FNAF 2 location is out of commission because he just had his frontal lobe bit off. Then a certain someone comes along, Michael Afton. He starts working at the Freddy's locations so he can try and find William. Because at this point, William has gone missing. But why is William missing? I'm so glad you asked. In between this period, between the puppet incident in 1987, uh, we have I'm going to make a smaller timeline down here so I have more space. Creation of the Fun Times slash Circus Babies location. William's destruction of the uh, show times. Uh, William, at some point, goes into the Freddy's location that is currently active because there's a lot of them that open and close because of all the death. <laughs> so it's hard to keep track of which location that we're currently at. But whatever location we're currently at, William goes to there and finds the original four Showtime animatronics from the missing children's incident, and he dismantles them. But little did he know, the spirits of all those dead kids were still there. And so they start chasing him around the building, and he panics, and he puts on the spring bonnie suit. He's laughing at these kids, because he's like, ha, ah, I invested you because I put on a fursuit. Little did he know, there was water leaking from the ceiling. Water drips onto him. He's laughing. The spirits of the dead kids are staring him down, cornering him. And then all of a sudden, the suit gets a little bit too wet. He falls over. His lifeless body slumped down. And the spirits of the kids fade away now able to rest because their killer has been brought to justice. As you can tell though, that's not the end of our story. I'm sure you'll get well acquainted with William Afton's famous catchphrase, I always come back. He destroys the fun times and then he gets spring-locked. At some point, William gets uh, walled off. Whenever he got chased into that room by 
the spirits of the kids. Uh, he was in the safe room that I mentioned earlier that the spring body suit was being stored in. So eventually that safe room gets walled off. Nobody knows it's there. So William is just sitting back there rotting. He is a corpse in this spring lock suit. And so Michael starts looking for his dad. Very much believe that Michael felt a lot of remorse for what he did to poor Evan during the bite of 83. Obviously, if you were the reason for your brother's accidental death, I'm sure you would be very remorseful and want to make amends. So what he does, tries to find his dad, figure out where he went so he can uh, put a stop to him because at some point, again, the story is very vague and convoluted and all over the place and you have to pull from like 50 bajillion different sources just to get a decent narrative. Michael knows what's going on with his dad and killing people. Mike starts looking for him and he finds the Funtime animatronics in an underground bunker that William built as a storage unit. In this underground bunker, we meet Elizabeth Afton, the daughter of William Afton, and the person who is possessing Circus Baby. How did that happen, you might ask? Somewhere in all of this, it's presumed that this happened between William not being at Freddy's and the missing children's incident. Elizabeth is killed by Baby. William Afton built Circus Baby as a way to lure in children to kill them. And so William explicitly said, hey, Elizabeth, don't go near Circus Baby. So I don't want you near her. But of course, Elizabeth seeing the cute girl animatronic is like, but that's my favorite one. I wanna go near her. So she sneaks off with Circus Baby and then Circus Baby does what she's programmed to do and kills her. And then her spirit is possessing Circus Baby. And so it's also presumed that this tragedy is what pushed William further to kill more children out of anger and spite. Now Mike is looking for his dad, but instead of finding his dad, he finds his sister. Over the events of Five Nights at Freddy's sister location, in the true canon ending, there are several endings, in the true canon ending, all of the animatronics in that location, those are Funtime Freddy, Circus Baby, Funtime Foxy, and Ballora, all merge their parts together to become one super animatronic called Ennard. What happens is, after Mike starts looking, Mike gets scooped. Can anyone guess what getting scooped means? No, okay. He, tricked. he did get tricked. He did okay. get tricked into going into the scooping room and a big mechanical arm called the scooper, which was used to remove animatronic parts from suits, entered, which is again, those four animatronics, tricked Michael into going into the scooping room so he could scoop his guts out and use his corpse as a disguise to fit in with the human world. Entered successfully scoops Mike and Ennard escapes into the human world. And we get a very iconic cutscene in 8-bit where it shows Mike's body happily walking down the street. And then it repeats a few times, but every time something is a little bit more off. Michael's body gets more and more shriveled and purple. Eventually, Mike is literally a walking corpse. His body is like completely rotted and purple. And at the end of the final walkthrough, he collapses on the ground and his body vomits out all of the animatronic parts that make up entered into the sewer. The camera lingers on Mike for a while before he stands back up. He's still alive somehow. I think this has to do with agony and remnant because I don't know how else to explain Michael Afton being undead after having his gut scooped out and being used as a skin suit by a robot made of four other robots. Mike continues trying to find his father throughout all of this, uh, somehow avoiding being called out for being a walking corpse. So 
now that we've got all of that out of the way, we can skip to over here, 2023. This is when Fazbear Frights opens. Fazbear Frights is a horror attraction based on the events or the local legends and rumors and tall tales of what happened at the original Freddy's locations. And you are the security guard there. And many believe that the security guard of that location is Mike Afton, trying to continue to find his father. What happens here is we meet back up with William. The person who is running Fazbear Frights uh, on night one of the game, because each game is split up into five core nights along with a few extra challenging nights, usually going up to night six and seven. Uh, Fazbear Frights, uh, night one in FNAF 3, nothing happens. There are no animatronics in the building. There is nothing there. Night two, you get a call from your boss, who you only know as Phone Dude, and he says, we found one, a real one. And who is it? But, uh, where'd he get? Spring Bonnie, William Afton in the suit. In the remains of that location, they found the walled off safe room and they uncovered him still in the suit. And throughout the course of Five Nights at Freddy's 3, his zombified remains within the spring trap suit are coming to get you. He is kept alive by his sheer will to live. Again, agony becoming remnant and fueling his desire to live. Of course, it's most likely not the actual body of William Afton that is animate, but it's his soul inhabiting the springlock suit. And it just so happens to be that uh, the structure that the springlock suit is using to stay upright, because remember, they're normally empty. They can be used for robots or humans. The structure that is being used for the suit to stay upright is William's body. So it's not his body that's alive. It's his soul that's in the robot suit that is alive propelling the both of them forward to come after you, the player. At the end of FNAF 3, Fazbear Frights burns to the ground. The true ending has you burning down Fazbear Frights. At the end of FNAF 3, there is a newspaper clipping that shows Fazbear Frights burns down, but if you write in that image, you can see in the background, William is not dead yet. Now it's time for Five Nights at Freddy's 6 at an undisclosed period of time afterwards, we get Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. In this game, you are a Freddy Fazbear franchisee and you open up your own restaurant to uh, make money. However, once again, you are playing as Mike looking for his father. And believe it or not, you find him. You find all of them, all of the animatronics are lured by some unknown force to this one location. You have to, till the end of the week in that game to get all of them successfully salvaged and in your restaurant so you can achieve the true ending in which Springtrap, who is William Afton, Springtrap now known as Scraptrap after damaged by the burns from the last location. You have Elizabeth, who as we know, Circus Baby was part of Entered, but in between games, uh, which is very poorly explained, but in between games, Entered kicked Baby out of their group, which means only uh, Funtime Freddy, Ballora, and Funtime Foxy were left in Entered, and they rebranded themselves as Molten Freddy. And so you have Molten Freddy, which is those three animatronics, you have Scrap Trap, you have Scrap Baby, which is Baby who reassembled herself from Scrap, and you have uh, a new animatronic called Lefty. And Lefty was an animatronic specifically designed by Henry Emily to locate Charlie Emily, the puppet. And it seems he has succeeded because in certain scenes you can see the body of the puppet inside of Lefty. So Lefty has succeeded in capturing Charlie and bringing her back. 
if you achieve the best ending in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, you get a monologue where Baby is saying, you dummy, you thought you lured us all here, but we lured you here so we can kill you. But then Henry Emily, who is revealed to be your boss that you got the franchise from, interrupts Elizabeth and tells her, no, this was all part of my master plan. And says to, basically his plan was, he brought every remaining animatronic that hadn't been destroyed, every restless soul that hadn't been set free from the torment and agony of having their lives stolen by William, all of them in one place, and he burned the place to the ground. All of them turned to nothing, and their souls are set free, except for one, William. We get to the last game of our story, Ultimate Custom Night. In this game, it is widely believed that you are playing as William Afton in your own personal hellish purgatory. It's unknown what that is taking the place of, like if his soul is being held somewhere or if his body and mind are being kept alive and tormented within his mind. But we do know that the vengeful spirit, Cassidy, one of the souls that was in Golden Freddy, refused to let go after being set free. And it attached himself, or sorry, it attached herself to William Afton and is torturing him in Ultimate Custom Night. And so it's believed that this game is William Afton's own personal torture, getting what he deserves for all of this. Because he caused all that pain and suffering and agony, he's getting it thrown right back at him, being tortured with the very monsters that he created because the vengeful spirit of Cassidy refuses to let go. Everyone else has let go. Henry, alongside with Mike's help, has set all the other ones free. But Cassidy refuses to let William go and is holding him indefinitely, giving him what he deserves. Any questions? Okay, so when the animatronics are fighting people, why do they aim specifically for their prefrontal lobe? Okay. Uh, I think that's specifically the two bite incidents. Uh, bite of 83 was because Evan's head was specifically put in Fred Bear's mouth. And uh, bite of 87, uh, I'm not 100% sure. Some people used to think that uh, there are two souls possessing Mangle, and one of them is a dog. Because there is a cutscene in a uh, Pizzeria Simulator, where a girl is playing an arcade machine. You are playing this arcade machine, and the more you play it, the like more disturbing it becomes. And eventually, the power-ups that you collect become what looks like it could be a dead dog. And so it's implied that William tricked this girl into thinking, hey, I can bring your dog back to get her. And it's rumored that uh, William killed that dog and put it in there. Where's the government in all this? You know, a bunch of people are dying, so. Uh, that's a great question. We do know there were police uh, investigations in the missing children incident, but somehow they never thought to check inside the smelly robots. Yes? You get to make pizza in pizza simulator. Yes, but no. In the opening of it, it tricks you into thinking it's going to be a different game than it actually is. And you make your own little pizza, and then you can play a little 8-bit mini game where you like play as Freddy and you're shooting the pizza at kids to feed them. But then the game glitches out and opens up into Five Nights at Freddy's 6. So yes, you do, but not permanently. I hope you were taking notes. Because boy howdy, do I have a surprise for you. Make sure you have a pencil or some kind of writing utensil. It's quiz time. And whoever makes the highest score on the, I did say at the beginning there would be a quiz. And whoever makes the highest score on the quiz gets five bonus points. Really? Yes. <laughs> Can I show this to the camera? Sure. Okay. So where, did, where was Springtrap discovered prior to the events of FNAF 3? Miser said FNAF 1. 
and technically she's right. So way to go. <laughs> right on the technicality. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you putting up with this. Uh, like and subscribe. Anything y'all want to say? Good job. It was awesome. Slash from the outside. No, you should be I think we are turning the mouth the wrong way. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>